That's not my slide. <laughs> Should I skip? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Oh, OK. There we go. Oh. So that's a picture of me on my fifth birthday. And uh, my mom loves to embarrass me with the story of how, as a kid, I never let anybody sing happy birthday to me. The cake was cool. The presents were great. But I wouldn't let anybody sing happy birthday. And that story actually tells you a lot about who I was, and in some ways, who I still am. Because the reason I didn't want anybody to sing to me is because I really hated being the center of attention. And to tell you the truth, I'm still the type of guy that prefers being the behind-the-scenes editor to the guy up here on stage in front of all of you. So that's my story. If you guys are here, then you know Jeff. Um, and you probably have heard Jeff tell the story of being a lonely kid in Long Island and discovering ham radio, and how that primitive form of social media allowed him to connect with faraway strangers and to feel less lonely. And that went on to inform everything he did afterwards, from his work in voice over IP, to early advocacy of Twitter, to bringing people together at events like these. Now, I'm sure we could all think of people who are truly defined by their stories. Barack Obama, of course, first came to national attention and finally won the presidency, largely on the basis of his own transformational personal story of being the son of a white single mother and a black immigrant father and really embodying uh, that idea of, of um, bringing the country together. Of course, in the tech world, we have Steve Jobs, who famously dropped out of college because his parents couldn't afford it and ended up auditing a calligraphy class, which really taught him about the power and importance of design. Now, of course, those stories resonate because they ring true. There are also stories of epic story fails. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Lana Del Rey. She sort of took the blogosphere by storm last year with a song called Video Games, which was this nostalgic song with this homemade-seeming uh, music video. And at the center of it was this beautiful, enigmatic, kind of indie femme fatale. Um, but then it came out that Lana Del Rey, its real name is Lizzie Grant. And about a year before, she had come out with another album, more of a, a mainstream pop album, which mysteriously disappeared as soon as Lana Del Rey appeared. And it turns out that within a year, she had completely been reinvented um, from this conventional pop star to this indie darling, complete with a seemingly inflated lower lip. And she went on Saturday Night Live, and she had this really awkward performance where she seemed absolutely terrified. And the critics, who she had completely seduced earlier, turned on her because uh, her story no, that she was telling, that, that she was selling, no longer rang true. She no longer seemed authentic. And so I want to go back to my own story uh, and fast forward from that kid in 1989 with a birthday cake to September 2008. Um, I was a journalism student in Washington, D.C., and you might remember that uh, 2008 in Washington, Washington D.C. was a pretty interesting time and place to be, because not only were we in the midst of this dramatic presidential election, but that was the exact month when uh, AIG got bailed out and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac got bailed out, and Lehman Brothers finally crashed, um, bringing the whole global financial system along with it. Um, and so I graduated uh, sometime between Obama's election and his inauguration with a master's degree in journalism. And of course, this was a time when newspapers and magazines were folding left and right, when people were, or journalists were accepting buyouts or being laid off altogether. But it was also the time in spring 2009 when Twitter uh, hit the mainstream. And so, like a good aspiring journalist, I joined Twitter, and I launched a blog, and I started putting myself out there in a way that I hadn't really before, being the kid who no one, never wanted anybody to sing happy birthday to him, who hated being the center of attention. And I, uh, I started telling my own story on, uh, of beginning my career at the end of journalism as, as we knew it. Um, so that was, uh, that was the journalism world. Uh, of course, journalists weren't the only ones who were suffering at the time. 
The other side of the equation were the marketers, who had traditionally relied on uh, the content journalists produced to get their stories in front of audiences. And one, one uh, uh, agency in, partic in particular was a uh, content marketing agency called Spofax. And uh, Spofax publishes branded print magazines for brands like Air Canada and Fairmont Hotels and Mercedes. And around this time, uh, the powers that be at Spofax looked at what was happening in the industry and said, you know what the world needs right now? A blog. But they were smart enough to know that this blog couldn't just tell their own story and it couldn't just talk about their clients. Uh, this blog would tell the story of these ongoing changes in the media and marketing universe of which they are very much a part, and of course, which I was very much a part of. And so, here's where these two stories converge. Basically, I was uh, at a cafe in my hometown in Montreal. Um, at this point, I was graduated, I was back home, and uh, um, at this cafe, suddenly I found myself in the midst of this uh, literary event called Fiction Bitches. I'm not making this up. And, uh, and among the women who got up there and read their work was one guy named uh, Arjun Basu. Some of you may know Arjun because he actually spoke at the very first 140 conference uh, around the same time in June 2009. Arjun publishes 140 character stories on Twitter to about 150,000 followers around the world. But he happens to be based in Montreal and he happened to be at that cafe that night. And so after he spoke, I did something that was a little out of character for me. I went up to him and I told him, good job. And then I went home and I added him on Twitter. And uh, I had no idea who this guy was at the time, but I received a, a direct message right away. Turns out he recognized me from the cafe and said, hey, I'll add you on my corporate account. Well, that's when I found out that Arjun is actually the editorial director at Spofax, the same company that was launching this blog. And so, I ended up um, in his office and, uh, you know, of course he told me that there were no jobs, nobody was hiring, but that I could start coming in um, as an intern. And I did, and he started assigning me these stories for this blog that they were about to launch, this mysterious blog. And uh, about a month later, I became the editor, and about three weeks ago, we celebrated the third birthday of Sparksheet, which is now a multi-platform magazine which has won about 24 industry awards in the last three years. And so, thank you. <laughs> and so, the point of this story is that, of course, you can't control the economy, and you can't always control who you are and, and where you're from and, and where you come from. But these things shape who we are. They're part of our story. And, and so we might as well embrace it, and, and, and so you might as well start telling it, because the tools are here, um, they're available to all of us, and you never really know who may be listening. Thank you. <laughs>